Okay, great. No, I was having to see that. No, I might fold it into my project, but that's not yet. Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. Um, I just suddenly got like nervous. That, um, I was telling all you guys I want to take. I want to take the expectations for how co like coherent and like articulate I sound and just knock it down like a notch because the last seven two hours has been insane. Like I've just I've barely slept for like three days. But I'm gonna do my absolute best to tell you guys about this research project that I've been working on for about two years. Um, tentatively, this is this isn't even like a title so much as just like the topic of my presentation. Like I feel like I need to gather more data and kind of figure out before I come up with the sexy like title colon subtitle thing that you do in academia. But basically, what I'm gonna be studying is um, like I study business communication, and I'll be studying the use of persuasion at um, for just communication in general at this organization called Startup Chile, which I'll explain to you a little bit more in a second. Um, so general information about me, as I said, my name is Mason Pellegrini. I'm a doctoral candidate in this uh, discipline called rhetoric and composition, which is basically, people also call it writing studies. Um, I'm also a writing instructor, or at least I was a writing instructor and administrator at Purdue University in the professional writing program. Um, I wish that I'd included some cool personal details about myself the way that Robert did. Also into nerdy things and video games like that. I'm a break dancer. I'm a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. I've been sober for like 10 years. I'm slightly older than I appear. You guys are like 32 years old. People always think I'm like 26. But um, yeah. <clears throat> I feel like such a like communication teacher as I'm the only person who like broke down like what my presentation's gonna have. <laughs> but um, so basically I'm gonna tell you guys like the story of my presentation uh, and my, my project. It's been, it's developed over a very, very long time and I'm gonna describe to you like, like how I kind of just developed it, the story of making it, where I'm at right now, and then how I'm thinking about proceeding forward as I uh, do this project. So let's get started. All right, so this project started for the most part with like the research site, which is Start Chile. Um, like it's just, it's a really, really interesting uh, case study in general. And I'd done a project very similar to what I'm proposing to do with Start Chile right before COVID started basically, where like, you know, I studied business communication and very, even more specifically, I study how entrepreneurs communicate. Very much like a niche and, you know, in the discipline that I'm in overall. Um, and I had done this project with my PhD advisor where we had taken a bunch of entrepreneurial ecosystems in different countries and basically just did case studies of all of them, kind of just compared them, how communication works at like a network level. Um, and I was, I wanted to do a Fulbright and I was looking for interesting case studies and I found Startup Chile. If you guys don't know what Startup Chile is, um, it's a business accelerator created by the Chilean government. Um, the initial objective they had with Startup Chile was to change the Chilean mindset when it comes to entrepreneurship. And by all means, they have succeeded really, really uh, intensely. So it's one, of, it's one of the top business accelerators globally. That's why I was like drawn to it, because I'm like looking, I'm like, okay, I want to go to a country where people speak Spanish because I want to work on my Spanish. I think it'd be cool to go to a place where people speak a different language. And I was like, what are like the best business accelerators that we have like in all of the you know, Spanish speaking world? And Star of Chile is probably it. Um, they've accelerated over like around 1,600 or over 1,600 companies and have a total valuation of like $1.5 billion or something like that. So it's like super successful. And, um, and, it's, and it's really, really unique in the incubation model that they use as well. Um, so most of the time when you have business acceleration, people, <clears throat> people don't even, like in the United States, people don't even want to accelerate a business that is from a different state. Because usually the whole idea about business accelerators is to create businesses for that location to stimulate like economic growth, right? So a lot of time, like in Indiana, for example, it's like you can't move your business. If we're going to give you $50,000 or whatever to start your business, we want you to stay here. Startup Chile is unique because they don't care at all where people come from. So they, you can literally, from any country in the world. So there's literally people from over 80 countries that go to Startup Chile um, that start businesses there. And because of it, they, it operates entirely in English too, which makes it easier for a guy like me who doesn't speak Spanish very well. <clears throat> um, so my in-country collaborator, so I was like, okay, I would like to start study Startup Chile. Who is a person that would be well-suited to help me in this research project? And I found this, uh, academic named Dr. Michael Leatherby. Um, he's been super duper helpful. I'll, I'll explain to you how he helped me de develop the project. But he's a professor of entrepreneurship at Catalica. Um, so obviously that's pretty good by itself. Um, and he's director of a research laboratory at Catalica as well, which is I think why he was like open to doing this collaboration because he, he does that. It's like if you want to you know, collaborate on a research project related to entrepreneurship, 
Um, and even way more important than that, so like when you do you know qualitative research like I do, and I'm like, okay, I want to study this organization. Like I need to find like an in on the organization. You know, who can help me kind of get access so that I can go in there and gather data. And super duper importantly, he's a he's the president of the advisory board of Star Chile. So he's super duper deeply connected to the organization. Um, I missed one of my bullet points. The way that I found him was I was studying Star of Chile, and he's he's already done qualitative research there. You know what I mean? Like he's he's gone in there and studied them a bunch, and I was like, oh man. This would be perfect. Try to reach out to him in several ways, and eventually he talked to me, <laughs> and and uh, and yeah, wrote me a letter of support. Here's a picture of him that I accidentally found on the internet with like a f a famous uh, uh, entrepreneurial influencer named Yves Pigner. I was like studying this like he's like like famous, and I was like I was looking at Creative Commons and finding pictures for him, and I was like, oh, here's a picture of Yves Pigner, and I was like, and Dr. Leatherby, and I was like, oh my god, and I was like, that's him. I was like, that's so random. So yeah. I didn't need to say that. All right. Now I'm going to describe you guys where I am right now in my research project. So yeah, it's crazy how long the trajectory is, you know, for um, Fulbright, right? I started working on this project like two years ago. Like I was putting out feelers, trying to get into the organization, talking to other people. Things worked out well with Dr. Leatherby. And before I even got accepted to the Fulbright, he was like, we're having meetings and he was helping me to like develop the project. He's like, okay, like, you know, what do you want to, like, what questions do you want to answer? Like, what can we do with this research site? Um, and then after I got the Fulbright, um, he told me that he wanted me to basically prepare to contact Star Chile because he's like, look, these people are extremely important. You need to like really have like honed what you're going to ask them. He told me to focus on three things: creating a value proposition for Star Chile, refining my so that like so that like he he basically said that they're not going to participate unless there's something in it for them, right? You know what I mean? Like they're not going to allow you just to come in here and gather all this data if it's just going to be absolutely like you're just extracting this information, writing your dissertation, and just like leaving. So like, how, how could you help them? Um, refining my research questions, stuff anybody asks, I talk about them in a co coherent way. Um, and then refining my ask for Startup Chile. It's like, look, so if they agree to it, you need to be able to you know, tell them exactly what you need from them to create to complete this research project. So I did all of those things. So this was probably like four months ago or something. Um, and because I'm you know, a writing studies guy, I was like, oh, I'll make a document. I was like, that's what I'll do. I was like, I'll make a document that kind of outlines everything that I've come up with. So I made this like one page document. I sent it to Dr. Leatherby and I was like, hey, this is what I'm thinking about for my proposal to Star of Chile. Um, could you give me some feedback on it? But he literally just immediately sent it to Star of Chile. I was like, no, I was like, not ready. <laughs> but uh, but like, I guess maybe he thought that I was ready or something. And since then, that was probably like six weeks ago, he's been in talks with um, like the executive direct director there. And he says they're, they're hammering out a memorandum of understanding. Um, hmm. Yeah, so I think that, that and, and he agreed to be the principal investigator. He's like, I think they'd be they'd be more comfortable if I was the principal investigator, and we did it through uh, Catolica. So I think that like that's how it's going to work out. Um, I got worried because like it happened right before the um, February, when everybody warned me that everybody would be on holidays. Mm -hmm. um, and then he didn't he didn't email me for like three weeks, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so nervous because I want the full ride to work out. So I sent an email. And I'm like, what's going on, Doctor Leatherby? And he emailed me back, and he basically was like, okay, like I can't guarantee it's going to work for obvious reasons, like, but I see absolutely no reason why it wouldn't work. I've been talking to the executive director a bunch. It's going to be fine. So I think it's just going to work out, which I'm super stoked about. I think it was the clout of the Fulbright, right? Because as soon as I'm like, look, I've got this Fulbright grant, they're just like, all right, whatever. Like, let's do it. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm like, okay. So, um, so yeah, I'm super excited about that because it's like, if they give me what I asked for, it's going to be so easy to create like studies that like I can get published. You know what I mean? It's like such an interesting research site. So, so there was a lot. Tell me, let me know if I'm talking too long. I didn't like, okay. Um, so, it's like this project evolved so much from the beginning, um, just through talking with Dr. Leatherby, interacting with Startup Chile, and just and trying to make it fit into my dissertation as well, right? So like I'm in the fourth year of my um, PhD, and basically all I'm doing at this point is finishing my dissertation, um, and I already wrote a chapter, so I need to make it work. So I've got three research questions. <clears throat> the first, and this is the one that was the um, value proposition of Startup Chile, is like, and this is what Do Dr. Leatherby was pretty like staunch on this, he was like, this is like, you should do this, um, is basically like, what pitching strategies in Startup Chile are correlated with higher or lower levels of performance, right? So when it comes to the way that uh, startups talk about their business, which ones are more consistently, like which persuasive strategies do people use that are correlated more consistently with like people perceiving them in a positive or negative way, if that makes sense, you know, like being more likely to give them money. Um, and then this next one is basically looking, and I know this seems diffuse, but this is me just like 
fitting everything in. To, like there's a lot of there's a lot of pre you know different pressures on me to make this fit into my dissertation and for Star of Chile and for Dr. Leatherby. So it's like the the second question is how does network communication Star of Chile support the creation of new businesses? So I'm actually working on a project that's extremely similar to this right now. Where like I I just did this with this um, this business accelerator in my hometown where I like go in there. And I like gather up all these documents and um, you know and like training documents and business pitches and business plans and all this stuff and interview a bunch of people and st uh, analyze people's websites and stuff and basically just look at the organization from like a like an organizational level right so I want to do that with Startup Chile as well um, and the last one because it's such a great resource site for like people coming from different countries I want to somehow get like, a, and this is what was foregrounded in my Fulbright proposal as well, and I know it would turn into an awesome article, is like basically just like intercultural communication plus Startup Chile, right? Like, like what, how do views on what is persuasive and what is not persuasive change depending on like what country people are from, right? Because there's people come from all over the world. Um, okay, I, yeah, I forgot where this was going. Um, so <laughs> I told them that I'd provide them a report that detailed this, and then these two, these two research questions are basically chapters four and five of my dissertation. So that's how kind of like all of that like fits in. Okay, cool. And then this is where I'm going. So basically, like, I feel like it's hard to know exactly what the methodologies and or methods are going to look like. I know what the methodologies look like for the most part um, until I go in there and I know kind of how Star Chile will uh, collaborate with me, what kind of data they're you know comfortable giving me, et cetera, et cetera. But basically, for the performance question, this is the way that I'm envisioning it. I'm pretty sure it'll work out like this because it doesn't require a lot of effort on Startup Chile's part. Um, for the performance question, it'll just be what I, what people in my discipline refer to as rhetorical analysis of the pitches, right? So at the end of each incubation program, everybody pitches their business in an in a event that people call uh, Demo Day. And um, this would involve me just like, I have like videos um, of each pitch, probably attend the events as well. And then it would, a lot of it would be me just like sitting at my computer, just like, just analyzing them, you know, coding them and being like, okay, like this pitch did this, this pitch did this, and then comparing it with the judge scoring from, from that day. Um, so that's like, I imagine this will be more kind of like quantitatively oriented because this is one that Dr. Leatherby like wants me to do. And I feel like Star Chile would be more interested in having like kind of like a really like numbers based approach for like, um, cause, and I've read a lot of his, not a lot of his research, I've read some of his research is extremely like social science-y, which, yeah, that's the way I'm imagining kind of methodology for that. With the network-based um, one, I'm, I like, this is easy for me to picture because I just did a project super duper similar. I proposed to them that I uh, interview 40 to 50 entrepreneurs and employees at the organization. Um, and it seems like they're cool with that, which, oh my God, it'd be so easy for me to write my dissertation. So yeah, it, it basically used to be document and website analysis, uh, you know, on-site observations, and uh, and the interviews with the people. Um, the methodology for that, I don't even want to talk about this right now. It's like, <laughs> the, like <laughs> there's this there's this like social science theory called activity theory, and there's like this branch of it called writing activity and genre research, which is kind of pioneered by one of my mentors, this dude named Clay Spinuzzi, who's a really well-known um, researcher. Um, and that's 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 exactly how I'm doing the project for the entrepreneurial ecosystem in my hometown and that's kind of that'll be like the theoretical like back for that with the intercultural communication question that's the one that I need to learn more about the methods and the methodology because like within my discipline technical and professional communication this is like its own area of research which I'm not like really familiar with you know what I mean like I need to go and find studies similar to it and read and see what methods and methodology they use so that I could and, and like kind of what questions people are interested in uh, asking to kind of just like nuance how I want to approach that project this is a Gantt chart <laughs> that describes what like I'm hoping that I will do. I've got a lot of stuff right now that I need to take care of already. Not a lot of stuff, but I gathered all this data for the third uh, chapter of my dissertation that I need to like analyze and turn into a chapter. I'm assuming that'll probably take me like six weeks. I'm hoping to get human subjects board approval and the memorandum of understanding with Star Chile within a month. It'd be super duper cool if I could begin. Um, data collection like a month from now. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it took, didn't take me more than a couple months to get all of those observations and interviews for the network-based question. Um, every three months, I think Star Chile has a cohort of people come through the acceleration programs they have, 
and they have the demo date at the end of each one of those. I don't know for sure when the next demo day is, but like that would literally just be one day where I attend it and then I'd spend a couple months just like analyzing videos. And this is the order I wanna answer the questions in. And then um, the intercultural one is sadly kind of like the lowest priority one because I need to do this for Star of Chile. This is the next chapter of my dissertation. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know, whatever. Um, and then the whole time, I'm also going to be just like reading scholarship, processing, analyzing data, writing my dissertation, writing research reports, trying to turn things into journal articles, and in bold studying Spanish. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. <clears throat> Any questions? <laughs>